Hey, welcome back to part two. And now we're gonna talk about the fun part that really everybody wants to skip to that you will get to eventually if you follow the map that we have been talking about. Um, okay, so this is part two and I'm gonna write out, it's kind of like a long phrase, but it all makes sense in a second. It's called the fan generation and engagement machine. Okay, here we go. It is the fan and engagement machine, okay? This is part two. This is kind of where I am at in my music career now. Although I'll tell you, the foundation, the artist identity infrastructure that we just covered, that's cyclical, that never stops. So I'm always making new music. I'm always redefining my micro niche depending on the album, right? Cause that can shift just slightly per album. I'm always trying to um, enrich and discover my culture, say around that album or my music. I'm always engaging free traffic and social media. I'm always doing the branding. I'm always, so that's cyclical. That stuff never stops. So if you can first identify where you're at, that's gonna be so, so key for you. And then you can move on to this more advanced stage in your music career, or if maybe still a hobby for you. That I still feel like my music is a hobby, even though that's how I really started making most of my income was through doing just that stuff we were talking about. Um, and it generated a lot of online sales for me. I do six figures a year just in music sales without touring. And so you can see now how that's actually possible. When, before I explain that to people, people don't believe that I'm actually making money from my music. I am. I'm paying for my brand new album now that I'm uh, creating at this moment. I'm paying for my whole album through all my music royalties and the sales coming in from that because I have mastered that art, I, artist identity infrastructure. Now I've moved on to this part, the fan generation and engagement machine. This is where it gets really fun. Let's draw a little map again. Just, I'll make it less big. So, We'll call the Z because this is kind of the promised land. This is success. This is fans, super fans are finding you, okay? There's regular fans and then there's super fans and then there's some people in between. You know when you have a super fan because they use a lot of all caps. <laughs> they use a lot of exclamation marks. They actually buy your music. They tell all their friends. They give you uh, amazing star, like five star ratings on your Facebook page, which I recommend you have reviews up once you know you've dialed in those things. Uh, let people review your music online and don't be afraid of a few people not giving you five stars. It's nothing to worry about. This promised land here is the realm of super fan generation, okay? I have a machine turned on in my music business, my music career, where I am locating and finding and attracting to me super fans. People, super fans, let's define super fans for a second. A super fan is someone who actually buys your music. They, they kind of, they discover you. And then within the same day, they're writing you an email. They're telling their friends, leaving you a review on Facebook. They want to join your fan club. Like they're absolutely like crazy for your music. Then we have, you know, regular fans. We have people who are interested, but not that engaged. And there's all sorts of spectrums of different kinds of fans in between. We really want to focus on super fans. Think about this. This is very, very easy math. If you can sell a hundred dollars, of music items, whether maybe it's fan club plus, you know, an album bundle plus a vinyl or a ticket or something, $100 worth of music items to a thousand fans is $100,000 a year. That's what I've been making, six figures in my music business. It's not that hard to do, okay? You can sell $100 to a thousand people or you could sell even $200 to 500 people that's not that hard to do, by the way, when you add up concerts, maybe a special vinyl package or like an earbook, plus a fan club, plus like a Skype with you, or there's a hundred thousand different ways you could put together like a fan experience for $200. People spend way more than that on concerts alone. I know because I surveyed 
my hundreds of thousands of fans around the world. I ask them how much they spend on concerts and it's usually anywhere between $200 all the way up to a few thousand dollars. Some people fly to their favorite concert because they they're not coming into their city, so they'll fly out to them. So that's a super fan. Somebody who would get on an airplane, spend money on an airline ticket, a hotel, the food, a VIP ticket, some merchandise, they bring their friend or their mom or someone. I mean, that's a super fan. We're only really after those super fans. I mean, all the other fans are great too, and that helps. It gives you what we call social proof that you have a lot of followers and stuff. But the ones that matter, the one that will keep the ones that will keep your music sustainable so you can keep me making music are the super fans. So that's what I focus on in my career. And I have this machine now going on where I am locating in a highly targeted way super fans who are uh, being attracted to me. They are actually putting their, their money where their mouth is. They don't just say, I love your music. They do go and buy my music. Yes, people still pay for music. If you have a micro niche, you've built a culture and you know how to locate collector fans. Those are super fans. They buy music. These people want hard copies. They're, they might use streaming in addition, some of them do, but a lot of them want hard copies. I still get asked on a daily basis if I sell vinyl yet, and I haven't done, I haven't done vinyl yet, but I'm going to because I know people want it. So that's another thing. Keep in mind, don't do things unless you know people want it, okay? That's like number one business rule. A lot of people create products that nobody wants. So make sure that your music is good and that before you get into merchandise, people are actually wanting that. Okay, so this is the promised land. What is the machine I have going that where I'm literally sleeping in my bed and people are finding me, discovering me, buying my music and keeping my music alive. They're supporting me. Okay, this is where we start getting into paid traffic. I spent a lot of time on the previous stage, the foundation, the infrastructure, because like I tell you, and I'm warning you now, do not spend money on paid traffic until you've mastered your free traffic, okay? If you have nothing happening on your YouTube channel, you have nothing happening on Facebook. By the way, you don't need to be on every channel, just master one or two. If you can master those, then think about paid traffic, okay? And that includes press releases, that includes, you know, Google, YouTube ads, um, Facebook ads is a, I, I almost put this in a whole new category because of how powerful they are. Some of the paid traffic things you can do are more peripheral. It's like maybe some icing on the cake. This is absolutely revolutionary. And it is, this is a big part of the machine I have going. And the, and the reason why it works so amazingly well for me is because I've mastered my culture. I've mastered my micro niche. I know everything about my fans. I know where they live. I know even like I can, I can see the cities that they're concentrated in. I know what their hobbies are. I know what the books they read. I know the video games they play. I know what they do for fun. I know what brands they're into. I know the other bands that are like mine that they listen to for fun. I know so much about them. And one of the reasons I know a lot about them is because it's a lot like me. Your super fans are very much like you. So this is not rocket science, but it is also a lot of research, okay? When it comes to doing research and stuff, and I have very detailed methods of doing this um, that the top marketers use. I mean, I'm talking people making millions of dollars online. It's the same thing, and we need to be doing the same thing this comes down to relationship, okay? Our relationships with fans are a lot like dating and people don't know this. They think, well, if someone likes my music, they should just buy it. There are some people and some super fans who do, okay? I, that happens to me every day. People will discover my music, they'll go buy it. Those are people who like to go to Vegas and get hitched the first night they met, okay? There are those people, they exist, they're out there, they do that. A lot of people, the majority of people like to date for a while, okay? They wanna to get to know you. They want to learn about you. They wanna see what you're all about. You know, there's a lot of other things competing for their attention. And so putting effort into research, into cultivating your culture, cultivating what your music is all about, 
then spending money later on on a very highly targeted ad that helps attract those people, it helps them find you, it helps you become the big fish in the small pond, now you have kind of earned the right to date them, okay? And some of them, they might wanna get married right away, a lot of them don't. A lot of people will just follow you for a while, a lot of them will get on your email list, or they'll just watch you and they'll just, you know, but then when the time comes for you to release an album, or your next single, or your new music video, you now have an audience to actually release something to. That's the beauty of this whole machine. Until you get to this point, your number one effort should be going toward building your fan base every day, year round, by doing the things on the first page, okay? They're doing the things in the artist identity infrastructure. Now we come here, now this stuff makes sense, okay? A really cool thing you can do with Facebook ads after a while, this is advanced stuff, and I'm only gonna graze over this because I don't want you being too distracted by it yet. One thing you can do is called retargeting. Retargeting, this happens to you all the time, guaranteed. It's like when you say we're browsing around on Amazon or some store or maybe like a music shop and you're looking at gear and then you're on Facebook and you see that same item that you were just looking at a half an hour ago or yesterday and it's like in your news feed or somewhere somewhere on Facebook you're like okay that's weird like why is that same item that I was looking at a few days ago in my news feed now that's retargeting okay if it's kind of creepy at first when you know what's going on but it's actually amazing okay let me explain really briefly what this is um, basically has to do with cookies in your browser and things that you cookies and tracking pixels okay so it's, it's a smart way for algorithms to figure out what you love and what you don't love. So if people have done a good job with their marketing and with their targeting, they're not gonna show you men's underwear in your newsfeed if you are a female and you were looking at shoes or makeup, you know? If you're seeing men's underwear in your newsfeed, someone's doing a very bad job of marketing, okay? And targeting and remarketing. So retargeting, let me show you an example of how I'm gonna use retargeting right in the near future here. Video, Facebook video. I am going to release a music video in the near future here. It's gonna be kind of a, a lyric video with me also uh, kind of on a green screen, so I'm gonna be in the video. I'm gonna offer a song with this video Okay, so there, it's gonna be you know synced up with my music, but then I'm also gonna offer a free download, okay? People who watch the video for a certain amount of seconds, I can set up another ad to people who have watched a certain amount of that video. That's one form of retargeting, and it's absolutely genius. Even if they only watch three to seven seconds of your video, they're interested in your video. They just were distracted or busy or they were scrolling or something happened. You know, don't take that stuff personally, by the way. Um, if people only watch a certain amount, it's not because they're not interested. They are interested. People who aren't interested just scroll by, they don't stop, okay? Now, I can set up a new ad that shows to those people who showed interest in my song. And here's a key, and the reason why retargeting is amazing is because traditionally, studies have shown that people need to sometimes see things seven or eight times before they take an action, okay? So if I'm asking people to download my song for free, a lot of times people, people are scrolling and they go, oh yeah, I wanna do that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I keep meaning to do that and I'm busy or something happened or they, they got a text. People are distracted, you need to know that. People are highly just infiltrated with ads and, and calls to action and doing things. Don't take it personal. Just realize that people need to see things multiple, multiple times before they do anything. That might have been you here right now. You may have seen me asking, hey, you need this information multiple times before you finally went through with it and you're actually watching this. It's just how the human brain works. So retargeting is going to um, be highly beneficial for us who are further along in our journey to be able to leverage our time. This is all happening while I'm sleeping. It's happening while I'm playing with my kids, while I'm making my new album. I don't have to worry about it. I come and check on things. I've done, 
I have enough experience and I've done enough research to know and you know, I'm watching it, I'm tracking it, I'm keeping tabs, but it's doing all that work for me on my behalf and I'm getting a return on my investment. That's really important too. Along with this, and this is a big one, is email marketing. Another way to think of it is just relationship marketing. Email is just, it's just the platform we're using I think in the future, it's gonna actually be Facebook Messenger and maybe even direct texting and different things like that. It may be, I know that Facebook wants to replace email. I know that's the track that they're on and it, and it might. But for now, email is still absolutely huge. If you have an email list, you actually have an asset. You have something that's worth money, especially if they're engaged people who open the emails and read what you have to say. So this is a big part of my music income is email marketing. I attract people to my music using um, all the free things we talked about. And as a layer of the cake, I'm using paid traffic, I'm using Facebook ads, I'm doing things like remarketing and I'm using email. Something really cool you can do is you can actually, once you build a very good sized email list, you can actually upload your email list to Facebook and you can put an ad in front of the very people who are on your email list. And it's amazing what you can do. I mean, this is exciting stuff. And the reason that's so powerful is because these are people who are already very engaged with you. They have a relationship with you. And it's just, you know, sometimes we don't always open every email. So it's another kind of tool in the toolbox that you can use. I'm gonna warn you at the end of this to not try jumping to do these things on your own. And I mean that because, uh, some of these things are complex. They're simple, but they're complex. There's a lot that can go wrong if you don't have the right training. I'm gonna say 95% of musicians are nowhere near ready for any of this yet. We'll talk about it later. A very big key component to actually making any of this work at all is a skill called copy or copy writing. Copywriting is the art and science of using the written word to cause people, to motivate people to take an action, okay? So you might have heard me say the word call to action. That's like buy here, click now, download this song. Those are all calls to action. Um, and that's one little part of copywriting. Copywriting is the headline that you use in your press release. Copywriting is even the, the subtitle in your email that you're sending your fans. Copywriting is the actual paragraph that you write in an ad or even copywriting is even built right into anything you post in social media. What are the words you're using to motivate your fans to take an action? Or even just to engage, you know, post a photo below. Um, take a screenshot of what you're listening to right now. Post it in this, in this, uh, below this photo. That's all copywriting. It's all words that are inspiring people to do something. That's a skill. Most people do not fall out of bed knowing how to be a good copywriter. One really amazing thing about copywriting is you don't have to be good at writing in general. You don't have to be a good writer. You don't have to have an A in English class or anything like that. Um, copywriting is a skill and it's something I teach. I'm very good at it. I've mastered it for my particular audience and everyone's audience is different. So if you see one of my ads, don't copy and paste what I've done because I have studied and put hundreds of hours into studying my audience and what will speak to them. You are gonna learn eventually how to communicate, build a relationship, and speak to your fans, your audience. And that's the exciting part is because we're all unique, our music is unique, our fans are unique too. So this is a big piece of the automated machine, okay? It's the fan generation, it's a super fan actual generation, and engagement machine because I'm not just adding people to my email list and then, okay, see you later. No way. When I add people to my email list and when I am generating new super fans, guess what I'm doing year round? I'm preparing for my next album launch, even though it might be a year away from now. I am 
constantly building, 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 building. I'm dialing in my culture. I'm perfecting my micro niche. I'm building my fan base year round. So the next time I wanna release anything, one single, if I wanna release my next album, I am building a, a little mini ecosystem. It's a little mini empire of my very own with my own tribe of super fans, okay? This is the automated machine. This stuff is advanced, okay? This is where we're headed. I wanted to show you that somewhere down the line, you will do this. I wanna teach you how to do all this. I won't leave you hanging, okay? My job is I wanna change the world. I wanna change the music, music industry and empower musicians to be able to do this stuff. If you knew how to do this, if I knew how to do this 10 years ago, everything would be very, very different. We would be far more in control of our music career and the world would be a better place because it means our music is getting heard by the people who need to hear it, okay? That's what this whole thing is about. It is about the art. It's about taking control of our art and making sure it gets heard by the people who need it. That's what this is, okay? This is part two, and I wanna talk now about where do we go from here? Okay, so just a quick recap. I kind of drew everything out real fast so that this doesn't take too much more of your time. But, um, you know, here's my very bad drawing of a ship that kind of looks like a worm. It's supposed to be like a cool dragon, whatever. Um, this is our path to the promised land. This is the map. This is the guide to get you there. Okay, recap here. Artist identity infrastructure. You are going to develop your identity and build a foundation for a very successful and amazing house, all right? This is first and foremost, I put in the order of events that I see the most people having success, okay? First is the quality music. You have to start there. If you try to jump to anything else, it's not gonna work, right? Quality music that is amazing, life-changing, it touches the soul that makes a difference in the world. Next is discovering your micro niche. What is that? I don't want you doing it the other way around where you're like, oh, I wanna make a micro niche and I'm gonna try to make music fit into that mold and into that box. I don't think that's the way it works with art, does it? Let's first determine your music, your unique art, and then find out where does that fit in, okay? And then you can make tweaks and stuff, like in post-production, you can swap one instrument for another if you really wanna emphasize that micro niche. Then it's building culture and community. So important, nobody thinks about that stuff. And you're, you're gonna be miles ahead just because you've come here today, learned this. It's gonna change everything you're doing from here on out. And I wanna hear about exactly what you're gonna do with this afterwards too. So quality music, your micro niche, you're building culture and community. From that, it's gonna be a lot easier to come up with your branding, okay? Your, your logos and your colors, your theme. But just remember, branding isn't the logo. It's actually who you are. It's what your music represents and it needs to uh, properly represent who you are and what your music is. It just needs to be congruent, okay? And from there, your social media and free traffic. From there, this it's gonna be an outworking of all these other things that you've spent time building and developing. From there, you are actually gonna have a foundation upon which you can launch your music, your next single, your next music video to because you've taken the time to absolutely build this foundation here. This is your artist identity. When it comes time to do this, you will have success. We're having thousands of uh, musicians who've gone through my programs, having done all this in great detail, they've spent the time to build that foundation. There's no silver bullet. There's no get rich quick. Most of us don't even wanna get rich. We just wanna be able to keep making music, right? And remember, the biggest challenge here is who are you launching your music to? If you don't have a fan base, if you don't have these other things happening, you're gonna launch your music, that's fine, but people won't hear it. And the whole point of making music is so that others hear it. When you've mastered this, then this is the fun, juicy stuff that we get to do later on, okay? Um, I have a program called Superfan System, and that's all that this is. My other course, The Online Musician, it covers some of this on a basic level to kind of get you going, but this is, there's fewer points here, but they're far more complex. It's far more advanced, 
and you really need to know what you're doing. It's, it's a beast in and of itself, if you will. So this section here, fan, the fan generation and engagement machine, this is the thing I have going on year round. So all last year, for example, all I did was spend my time trying to help musicians change the world by doing this. So I didn't release any music last year. I released no new music. I didn't really spend much time on my music doing music stuff at all. I kind of had a season, if you will, of me teaching people this because I want to make a difference. And you know what was cool is I had this machine turned on and I generated like, I don't know, thousands and thousands of brand new super fans to the point where I still made six figures in music sales without touching anything. I didn't touch anything. I didn't release any new music. It was just this machine that had continuously been going because I dialed in my messaging, my wording, because I had studied my culture and my fans, I knew who they were and I knew that my advertising was on point and it still is. So now this year when I go release my brand new album, guess what? It's gonna be way more successful than even my last one because I mastered this. So now when you do the juicy fun stuff, it works like amazing, amazing, mind blowing stuff. I hope that this was enlightening, that it opened your eyes, that it opened your mind and your heart to the fact that you can be in control of your art and your music. That's what this whole point is. That's why I've dedicated so much time, so much research, so much experimenting in my own music career to do all of this is because I knew I'm like, dang, you know, I'm a mom of five, a stay at home wife, if I could make it work for me so I could be dedicated to my music, if I could make it for work for me and, and I don't even tour, I can't even imagine the things that are possible for musicians who are talented and they don't have, you know, they don't have five kids. They could go way further than I have with all of this. Nothing brings me more joy than the thought of that. Okay, aside from me making music and my fans loving it, the, the next thing that brings me a lot of joy is thinking about what you could do with it. You probably don't have five kids. If you do, high five from me. <laughs> there are a few students that I have that have a lot of kids also. But what could you do with this? What could you do with this? Imagine how you will feel when you have fans who are so into it. They're so in love with the music and the culture and community that you have created. They're sending you emails every day talking about how excited they are that they stumbled across your music. A lot of them will think it's by accident, but it's not. It's all part of your master plan here to be smart. You know, it's the difference between working hard and working smart. This is the new music industry now. You have every opportunity to determine your own destiny, your own fate with your music. So I hope you found this session enlightening, that you got a whole bunch of new ideas about maybe where you're at right now. I hope you've been able to identify exactly where you are on this map. Your homework now is to let me know where you are at somewhere below this video. I want to know where are you personally on this map? Where are you on your journey? Everybody is in a different place. Some people are at the very beginning. They, they haven't even made their quality music yet. They don't know. Uh, what their micro niche is yet, all of that. Totally fine. Um, I was there not that long ago. So everybody's on their own unique journey. I wanna know where are you at? Let me know that below this video. Let's do this together because I'm here in the trenches with you. Um, I can help you take the next step. Even if you don't get into one of my more detailed programs, I can still help you and I want to do that. So I'm here for you. I'm not gonna leave you on your own. I'm gonna take care of you. So do that below this video and I will see you soon.